What's going on guys? Chris is back with another fish tank build. Today's agenda is this Aquion Rimless 6 Gallon Aquarium. I'm really excited about this build. It's been a hot second since I've done a rimless tank. These things are completely beautiful and as you can see it's going to go in that little slot back there. So let's deep dive into this. I've decided to go with organic soil on this build just because it's super cheap and the plants absolutely love it. So yeah, this is basically my process for doing dirt tanks. What I do is use organic soil and I do two inches of the soil at the bottom of the tank. I then moisten it with a small layer of water and then I squeeze it together to make sure all the moisture is out of all the particulate and soil or whatever you want to call it. What I don't want is air trapped within the dirt because if this stuff creates air pockets, it can blow up in your tank and destroy the aquascape and just kind of everything. And yes, I realize there are tons of different ways to do dirted tanks, but this is my process. So I just figured I'd let you guys know a lot of people have been asking. So once that dirt is completely kind of soaked up and I know there's no air inside of it, I will then do one inch or layer of blasting sand over the soil. This is commonly referenced as capping it. And what this is doing is it's holding down the dirt from just kind of like, you know, because if you put dirt just straight up in a fish tank, it's going to flow everywhere. It's going to be mud, but the sand holds this down and I use one inch. It works great. As you can see, Avery got her hands dirty in this build as well, but blasting sand is my go-to choice. I get it for like nine bucks for 50 pounds of it. So this is a pretty cheap build for me. And that's why I love dirted tanks with sand substrate over it. And as some of you guys know, I kind of devoted this side of the countertop to fish tanks, and this is the side of my kitchen. So what happened here is this tank fit in here completely perfect. And uh, it just so happened it's gonna work out great. What I'm doing here is kind of just geeking out with plants and what I did was I hung a 4k light above these tanks and it's working out completely great. Here I am razoring off some deposit water sediment and uh, I, I, I'm just doing my best to make these tanks look as cool as possible and I'm just geeking out with planted tanks and I hung these lights underneath the cabinet. They're 4k LEDs. People say you need 6k but these 4k are working just great. So now that we have the substrate in and we have the glass looking good, now we need to add water to this dirted tank. And you got to be careful here because with dirted tanks, if you disrupt that surface of the sand and let that dirt get to the water column, it's a complete nightmare. Here's my little pump that I throw in the sink and I just plug it in. I use a little air hose connected to this little pump and it just pumps. It works perfect for these small little nano tanks because it's not too much water power being pushed to these small tanks. Another funny side note, I don't rinse my blasting sand whatsoever. I know that people preach, oh, you got to rinse this 10 different times. It's super dirty. I never rinse it. And that's what this hobby is full of. Once you start keeping tons of fish tanks and kind of debunking some of this stuff, it is what it is. And you kind of just listen to your experience. Now I'm trying to decide how I want to scape this tank because I'm not the best scaper on the planet. Uh, I'm usually a cichlid keeper and it's not my forte, but I try to do my best. So here we are delicately removing all of these water bubbles. Um, I am just the master at just being delicate and precise. Uh, that's sarcasm. So what I'm doing here is just kind of playing with some spider wood. I have no idea what I'm doing, so it is what it is. Uh, what I'm going to go do is grab some plants that a friend gave me uh, around five days ago. And here they are right here. Um, these are heavy root feeders, so they're going to do tremendously well in this dirted tank because uh, heavy root feeders love dirt. There's just no way around it. Um, here, I'll show you this same plant in a 20 gallon long over here underneath a beams work light and it, they've only been in here for like a couple days. Look at the look. Just look at that green. It looks absolutely amazing. Let's let's throw these in the tank and see if we can get these to look OK. I will say the root structure on this plant itself is absolutely crazy. Like some some plants have like a small like skinny root structure and these are wide and thick. Shout out to Dusty from Aquatic Guru. He's also from Minnesota. I've told you guys a bunch of times you need to subscribe to his channel. He's like a plant Jesus and he's the one that sent me these. Uh, also these um 
is this is money wart and someone gave me some clippings locally you'll realize that i'm kind of like a cheapskate and uh clippings is the name of my game because i don't spend a lot of money and i love clippings and i love being cheap in this hobby it's just kind of like some people like expensive stuff i get off to using the cheapest stuff you can just get by with and having it look 100 percent natural so here i added some more spider wood i don't know what do you guys think does this look okay uh, I am not an aquascaper, but I think it looks pretty cool. Well, guys, this is my Aquion Rimless 6-Gallon Aquarium build. Hopefully, you guys liked it. Uh, I'll give another review on this Aquion 6-Gallon Rimless tank in a couple of months to show you how that money wart in there is doing. Please um, let me know in the comment section. There's going to be a lot more videos coming. I've just been so busy, and I promise to bring you guys along for more of them. I promise, I promise, I promise.